What's up, everybody? Hi, guys. Corona. Rob here. And Rachel. Rachel's with me. <laughs> I don't know why we're 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 like laughing. So I'm much. tired, so forgive me. I'm giggly. yes. So recently, we finished the entire series that is the Mandalorian, which a lot of people have recommended to us, like a ton of people, because everybody says it's great. Mm -hmm. And we've done a bunch of other Star Wars related videos, uh, so. The way I see it, actually, probably Mandalorian's really the only thing we haven't covered. Yeah, that's, so... That's really, well, actually, that there's the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels and stuff, but in terms of, like, live-action mainline Star Wars stuff... Yep, so we're just going to give our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should give a disclaimer. There's going to be spoilers. However, it's almost silly to say that because I feel like we're the last people that... <laughs> like, in the world that are yeah, seeing this show. Yeah, we're the last <laughs> people on Earth that have seen this show. At least that's how it feels sometimes. So, yeah, we want to just do, like, a brief review and talk about the series, so... Without further ado, here it is, The Mandalorian. So, um, initial thoughts? What do you? What was your um, initial impression? I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, I think we both, at one point, turned to each other and were like, this is the best thing that Disney did with Star Wars. And yep. I feel that way. I personally so. think that it's the best thing since the original trilogy. I know other people will Wait, argue yeah, yeah. that, but like uh, somebody said to me in, in uh, a, another Discord server, not mine, that the Clone Wars is better, which we can't really comment. Yeah, on Yeah, I haven't seen, seen the Clone. Wars. I've seen actually, I've seen a lot of clips of the Clone Wars, but I don't know if I would agree with that. But and we'll, I've just we'll seen see. essentially none of it. Yeah, I found the art style really off-putting, and this is gonna bother some people. But I'm not the biggest fan of things that are animated. I prefer live action. How could stuff. you? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we're not talking about that. So, bottom line, you loved it. I loved it. I loved it too. Um, the end. The end. <laughs> that was All a right. good review. Wrap up. <laughs> this is a bit of a silly review. So yeah, um, I guess we'll like just go through a couple little things and then just kind of just give our thoughts on it. So um, in terms of the story, I personally, and I think you can expand upon this too, and I think you'll see the same thing. I love that it's sort of like a new little adventure in each episode. And then, of course, there's, like, the overarching plot, which is, of course, the Mandalorian um, basically uh, carrying around Baby Yoda, or what is it, Grogu is his name? Yeah. You find out, spoiler. Um, yes. And, yeah, basically just trying to prevent him from uh, being captured by these, I guess, like, remnants of the Empire that are trying to reestablish themselves and use him for some purpose that we still don't really understand. Yep. Yeah. I love the plot. I love that it's a Star Wars thing that isn't this big, epic, good versus evil, huge scope, you know, mm -hmm. really dramatic kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, which of course we love about the original series, but um, I like that it was just something totally different. It was like kind of silly at times, morally ambiguous characters, like, you know, it was totally different. It was its own thing. Yeah, I like it too, and it has a different feel than the other, like, movies and other things in the series. It's kind of got, like, what I like about it is that there's a huge homage to old westerns. Yes. Even just, like, The Mandalorian himself, like, I've, I've even said, like, because we've recently watched a bunch of old Clint Eastwood westerns, like, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, High Plains Drifter, Fistful of Dollars, those things. And uh, there's so many nods to a lot of those old westerns, and... Like I said, even the Mandalorian himself. He kind of sounds like Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah. He's kind of an anti-hero sort of figure, kind of like Clint Eastwood. Um, and even just, like, the settings, which we'll talk about, oh, like, yeah. the settings and stuff, too. A lot of it's, like, in the desert. and. Yeah, I love the, yeah. the Western thing. I remember in the first episode or something, I was like, this kind of reminds me of a Western. Mm -hmm. I thought I was so clever. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, yeah, it's, like, really obvious as yeah. it goes on. <laughs> it's a space Western, basically. Yeah, which I love. We love Westerns, so... And, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think what else about the plot. Uh, there's a lot of great characters in, um, in throughout the whole first two seasons. Agreed. And all of them kind of, most of the, the major characters that the Mandalorian encounters you, has some kind of follow-up and you, they kind of expand on their stories a bit. Like, um, uh, for example, uh, Carl Weathers' character, who I can't remember right now. I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. like, he, they, they really Ooh. expand his character. He starts out as the guy that the Mandalorian is hired by to basically hunt these different bounties. Um, and you have... Um, 
The Ugnock guy. The Ugnock. We don't remember you. his name. Yeah, I don't remember his name. Nick Nolte plays him. The guy who's like, um... Uh, he's, uh, I Have Spoken. I Have Spoken, I Have yeah. Spoken. I love he's that cool. guy. He's great. He follows up on him. It's pretty cool. And what a tragedy with that guy. Yep. And the droid, um... I, so IG... Eleven was it something like yeah I think so something like that it was so an IG droid. they follow up on a lot of these characters like they introduced a lot of them in the first season and they're kind of like in standalone episodes maybe one or two episodes and then they follow up on them on in the second season which is really cool so I mm-hmm. thought like I don't know I thought the characters were all pretty strong including the yeah. Mandalorian it kind of he kind of goes from this like sort of stoic kind of like again Clint Eastwoody and anti-hero kind of guy mm-hmm. and then they kind of expand on his character yep. which is pretty interesting like we got more got a lot more interesting it was kind yeah. of cool you know um to see him shifting his values for baby Yoda also baby Yoda is amazing like when we hadn't seen the show and it was like oh baby Yoda this baby Yoda that I was like okay like yeah yeah you know and now I get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's to- so cute. Totally on board. Totally on board. With oh yeah, baby I'm on Yoda. board. Yeah. And I think we might be a little biased too, because there's literally sometimes the baby Yoda reminds me of our child. Oh yeah, definitely. Moves like yeah. a puppet, kind of like makes these makes weird the noises. Same noises. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else about the plot? Um, there was some- somewhere I was gonna go with it. Oh, I like that it expands upon the a lot of the star wars lore and a lot of the creatures i don't know if you want to talk about this yeah i wouldn't really call that a plot thing but what i think maybe the thing i love the very most about um the mandalorian we talked about how it it has its own vibe but it's also so original star wars in a lot of ways yeah like i feel like it just um my favorite thing about it is that it takes you into what that world of the original series was like and just shows you so much more of it you know like especially i loved all the stuff on tatooine it's like there's alien species that you see briefly and you love like i always loved the jawas they're they're just in it a little bit and then suddenly we're getting to see so much more of them and like some flavor and like some funny stuff with them and like the tuscan raiders and like again that ugnaught guy who was just like an alien species that just appeared briefly in cloud city and like that really hilarious scene where they're throwing around c-3po's you know head (laughs) and stuff yeah Um, I just love that. It's like, this is the Star Wars we know and love, and I just wanted more of, and here it is, you know? Yeah. So. I also like with the plot that it's quite different, um, than the regular series, where I, I felt like the problem that, especially if we're gonna just talk Disney, the problem that most of the Disney stuff has had is that it's been, I think, trying too hard to cater in a way, well, I, I don't want to say that, because Mandalorian does cater to fans it really does in a way but it, it's in a like way. in a in a much better way it almost feels a bit more genuine if that makes sense um it feels like the catering to star wars fans that we all needed yeah you know? i agree with that it's yeah like, it feels like it was made by a star wars fan you know? yes it does yeah and it also and also like i like that you'll see i won't make this totally spoilery but there's definitely a few characters like legacy characters that come in, especially in season two. Oh, we're not gonna spoil that. Nah, I don't want to. I, I don't feel the need to spoil that. But you guys know who who they are, um, if you've watched it. And uh, I like what they did with them. I like that they're not really the main focus of the story, and the story still is mainly focused on the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. What about Grogu. the one that is like well known, going to be like going to have his own TV show? Can we talk about that? Oh yeah, might as well go ahead. Sure. Uh, so Boba Fett appears in it. Um, which I had really mixed feelings about. Not even mixed feelings, I just didn't really like it. Um, not that he comes back because apparently, like, not apparently, I read one of the books, you know, from the, like, from the old times that have since been, I think, like, stricken from the record, but, like, it was in the lore that Boba Fett doesn't die in the Sarlacc pit, so Mm -hmm. that didn't bother me, but I just didn't really like seeing it, like, Boba Fett as some random 50-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't really, I don't really think of him that way. Yeah, well... So I was like, eh. It's cool they brought, I'll say it's cool they brought back the actor who was in the prequels, but also eh. at the same time, I don't know if I was a fan of the actor from the prequels. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's taken a bit of the allure from Boba Fett away, which yeah. is alright. I mean, I wasn't a huge Boba Fett fan anyway, but I don't know. Like, I thought, I thought they did fine with this character, though. They didn't really... Eh. It was like it was alright. Right. Yeah, like it didn't feel like Boba Fett. And then when he put on the suit, he just looked like some dude cosplaying as Boba Fett. Like it did not look like Boba Fett, you know. <laughs> true, true. So, but that being said, I like that the show doesn't need to really hang its hat on the legacy characters and is kind of making a 
a name for itself sort of thing. I agree. And um, in terms of that, I also really like the setting. And by setting, I mean they go to many, many different planets. And I like that they mix, and they do this with the creatures too. Like like you said, we got to see the Jawas. We got to see the Tusken Raiders. We got to see uh, all kinds of different... um, uh, all kinds of different creatures from especially the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. But what I really liked was they did have some new creatures mixed in with them. Mm-hmm. And it felt... A new place. It felt, like, really genuine. It felt like th- it felt like these creatures just fit right in, you mm-hmm. know? So I liked that, too. Um, Absolutely. And the new characters, for the most part, I liked as well. Um, mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, there was definitely, like... Like, like you said, it was kind of cool to have a guy... Have a character like that Ugnaught that's, like, a, becomes a main character that was a species that we never really saw much of mm-hmm. or that didn't we see that droid like very briefly in the original trilogy yeah um yeah ig88 was one of the bounty hunters yep. that in that scene where it's like bounty hunters we don't need their scum you know? <laughs> <laughs> and i like the uh what was what was the name we should have done our research here but what was the name of the like lizard frog like creature with the eggs oh i forgot i like that that was like a new creature that, that was I really great liked. so cute and there was one um There was one creature, I think it was, like, the episode before that, which was essentially, like, a giant praying mantis, which was really cool. And, uh... I don't remember that at all. What I liked about that creature... Remember, he's the one... uh, He's the one that... Um... Uh... The woman who repairs his ship a bunch on Tatooine. Remember, she's, like, gambling with him. He's It's like this giant insect. Anyway... I don't remember that scene. I I really liked... I really liked him, and I like... One thing that I wanted to comment in terms of effects, which maybe this is a good transition into it, is that I loved that for so many of the creatures, they used practical effects. I Mm -hmm. loved that. They had a really nice blend of practical effects and and CGI, which I thought was, like, just fantastic. Visually, it was great. They did a good job. I thought they did a really nice job. all around, so... And something like Star Wars, I want to see practical effects like that because uh i mean that's what i mean god that's what at least the original trilogy um in terms of effects it was groundbreaking stuff what they were doing with the practical effects at the time Mm -hmm. so it's cool to see that incorporated into the modern era with also some like cgi flares and just it it all just looked really really good it made it feel a lot more star wars yeah it definitely did and and there was definitely a lot of like it, they could have, like, for example, like, Nick Nolte's character, I keep saying Nick Nolte, the Ugnaught, could have easily just been CGI. How do you know the actor who played that character? I was reading about it a little bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But his character could be, could have easily been CGI, but they just, they put him in makeup and costume and stuff. Yeah. And there's lots of, lots of characters like that, so I really, really appreciated that. Agreed. And the cinematography was stunning. Like, very, it mm-hmm. looked, the whole movie had such amazing looking scenery and... Yeah. Um, especially for kind of like the western theme, there's a lot of cool deserty shots and um, yeah, the style was cool yeah. too. Not just like the uh, visuals, but I, it was just shot with a particular style. Like yeah. they were trying to do the western thing, you know. I agree. Yeah, and it gave so. it gave it it gave it sort of uh, like sometimes I felt like I was I forgot I was watching a Star Wars something Star Wars until like a Jawa or something would pop up, but like. Uh, it definitely has its own vibe while be still being Star Wars, which I really, really like. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely very unique. Yeah. Anything you didn't like about the show? Oh. Um, what didn't I like about the show? I also didn't really... like. I, I was pretty neutral to Boba Fett being there, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was kind of like, eh. Like, his character's fine. You know, I, I've also never been like a really big Boba Fett fan because... Like, I don't hate the character, but he never really had a huge... I mean, I don't know the extended universe stuff as well, so forgive me for that, for you hardcore I fans. I will not. But, like, uh, I, I just never really saw Boba Fett as, like, this um, super important character. He was always just kind of a side thing. So, in a sense, I guess that's good, because it's bringing more, like, relevance to the character, I guess. But I was just like, eh, I could take it or leave, the, leave that. I really wasn't a fan of the actress, or really that... The, who's the one female bounty hunter? I forget her name, but I know who you're she talking about. She becomes, like... Well, I don't want to spoil it, but... She's the main female bounty hunter of the, uh... Um... God, I can't remember her name right now. Yeah. The but lady. The lady, With yeah. With brown hair. I just wasn't really a huge fan. Like, her character was alright, you know? Um... I liked, I liked her well enough. I liked... Like, um... I liked... I did like, as far as characters go some of the other Mandalorians, like, particularly uh, the lady who's, like, the head of the Mandalorians. She was pretty great. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was another thing I liked was 
them kind of going into the lore, the Mandalore, if you will. So that was yeah, that was cool. cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then, uh, is there anything else you wanted to say about like the effects or anything like that? The acting. Um, not really. No. I thought I thought for the most part the act all the actors were pretty good. Yeah. No so. complaints. It was just solid, you know. Oh, and the last thing we should really talk about is the music. Yes, that's pretty much the last thing I have to say. Go ahead. I'll let you go ahead uh, on this one. The theme was awesome. Yeah, the theme, all <laughs> the music was great, it. and particularly the theme was great. Yeah. Yes, I loved it. It was so catchy. We had it in our... We wa like binge-watched the show in, what, like, less than a week? Or a week? We had, yeah, our, like we that. had that in our heads for that entire I don't know how many hours are in a week but like for that entire time that many hours yeah it was yeah it was many I had it it was basically in my head like for a week straight and even just yeah. talking about it is like making the gears turn here and I'm hearing this I'm hearing the the theme song right now in my yeah, head it's great um oh another thing I wanted to say visually I loved at the end the way um when they the credits would roll they would have like um these like very retro looking artist renderings of scenes from the episode yeah that they were was great. so original star wars too like um i've seen like a ton of and have some drawings of the original series that were obviously like prototype drawings and it's the same style you know yeah i don't know if that's supposed to be storyboard art or what but like the yeah during the end credits when they show all the paintings of all the scenes it was it definitely gave me that sort of original trilogy vibe which was really yes, cool i loved it this is the closest thing i think we've ever gotten to sort of capturing that that original trilogy but what about attack vibe. of the clones <sighs> oh my god <laughs> what about uh what about rise of skywalker yeah. um but no it, i i really liked it um i am very excited about season three mm -hmm. i will say one thing that i hope they don't do because there were definitely some big name characters towards the end of season two. We talked about Boba Fett. I won't spoil the big one. Yeah. Um, but I don't want the show to hang its hat on that kind of stuff. On having, you know, having characters like... We're talking post-Return of the Jedi. Like, I don't want Han Solo to just randomly pop up. Like, if he does for, like, a, like a second, that's fine. Or, or any of that. Like, I just don't want them to become, like, the main focus of the plot. Because yeah. I think the show... I like the format of the show of it's just like the Mandalorian comes to town. It's it's literally again like a western. It's like the Mandator the Mandalorian comes to town. There's a crisis. He kind of settles it and they move on to the next planet, you yeah, know. Yeah. I don't foresee them doing that. I kind of liked that. I feel like that would be the death of the show and I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. But I do want to say without spoiling the ending of the second season, even though we said there was going to be spoilers, but that's okay. Um that that ending was epic and that oh, it was awesome and yeah. that cameo was like i was like oh my god like this is so <laughs> cool yeah it was cool yeah <laughs> and oh another actor or another actor i want to bring up was um gus giancarlo oh, esposito yeah. i liked his character a lot as known as gus the character yeah, from breaking him bad. and bill burr who were both in breaking bad which was pretty funny mm -hmm. but that uh, they were cool and uh yeah i don't know i feel like there's more and more I could say, but this video is probably getting pretty long at this point. So, yep. Uh, to end it, how about favorite episode? What was your favorite episode? Oh, my favorite episode. Um, I don't really know why, but it was the I think it was the first episode of season two or the, the second. I think I if it's the episode art, we might have the same favorite episode. Well, you are gonna have to pick a runner up then because oh. I'm choosing the one where there's like they're on tattooing and there's that um. Like monster and uh, the sandworm, the sandworm, Dune reference there, you know, and um, the Mandalorian comes rolling into that other town, Mos something with a P, and then he has to work with the people of the town and with a group of Tuscan Raiders to try to take it down. That is also my favorite episode. I love, I love how it's literally he kind of walks into a bar. And you think that he's gonna have a shoot like that was so so like a an old western. That was probably like the most obvious western reference of anything. That was like literally the opening of High Plains Drifter. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was like somebody rolled the Clint Eastwood uh, western Dune and Star Wars into it, like episode like Star Wars Episode Four in one episode. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. It was that right. was. Yeah. A brilliant, brilliant episode. What I think I love most about that episode was um, I really enjoyed seeing more of the Tuscan Raiders for some reason. Yeah, and that was cool. If you're since we both have the same episode, if you want 
a runner up for me. I think it's like the third or fourth episode of season one. Um, I love the episode where he, I think it's right after he breaks in and, um, what is it? He breaks in and I think he gets baby Yoda. And then the next episode, remember there's that chase with the Jawas. Yeah, thing. yeah, the it, sand crawler. That episode was great. Again, to go to the Western thing, it's literally a train, yeah, yeah. It's like a train robbery <laughs> yeah. kind of scene. That was a really, really, really awesome yeah. scene, and that was a really cool episode. Those two episodes were actually really I awesome. I love seeing more of the Jawas, you know, like the, when they wanted that egg and stuff. Yeah, that was so good. That was so good. <laughs> it was that episode, yeah. He has to go get the egg. That was that was awesome. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was. Uh, I just think the show is really well done. Um, I kind of it was. I kind of got a little off put for a little while because it was one of those things where everybody was kind of trying to shove it down your throat, and I don't like that. But I understand why now because it, it is really the best thing Star Wars in a long time mm -hmm. and I think the franchise really needed it. Mm -hmm. I guess the moral you know? of the story is like I know some people are like oh everyone's recommending this I'm not gonna look into it usually there's a reason something is re really recommended yeah definitely you know? <laughs> definitely so, so uh, if you haven't checked out The Mandalorian yet somehow check it out also hopefully you didn't watch because there was a lot of spoilers and uh, yeah that's our thoughts on it loved it can't wait for season three and same I'm not sure what I think about having so many other shows, but that's for maybe a different video or something. We can rant after we see those if we choose yeah, to. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Or maybe lot. they'll be good, I it's don't know. It's a lot at once. Like, do we really need, like, it's like, again, I, I think I made the joke. It's like the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. What It's like, episode one, Obi-Wan <laughs> Obi Kenobi goes to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. Yeah. <laughs> like, Obi-Wan sips his tea, then yeah. takes an afternoon nap. <laughs> Obi-Wan reflects on his time as a uh, part of uh, the Jedi Council. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. So, o Obi-Wan thinks about how Anakin, how much Anakin hated sand and is starting to sympathize with him. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's, anyway. Anywho. On that note, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> I hate sand. It's coarse. Ugh, I don't even know the whole quote. Not like here. Everything's soft. And smooth. <laughs> <laughs> uh.